Hello everyone, you all are welcome back to our YouTube channel Escalenta Science. If you are new to here and want to learn about food science and technology, please hit the subscribe followed by the bell. Today we are gonna talk about freeze drying and its applications in the food industry. Freeze drying, which is also known as deobilization, is the process of removing water from a product by freezing and sublimating the ice to vapor. Sublimation is a physical phenomenon by which solid ice is converted directly into vapor without it passing through the liquid state. The unique advantage of freeze drying is that the samples are kept at low temperatures and remain frozen during entire drying process, thereby preserving thermolabile components all while maintaining the original shape and size. The dried product can then be stored for long periods without the risk of changing composition such as enzymatic and genetic or being infected by microorganisms which is all made possible due to the lack of water. Freeze drying is a dehydration technique. It different from other dehydration techniques as the dehydration takes place while the product is in a frozen state and under vacuum. These conditions stabilize the product, minimize the effect of oxidation and other degradation processes. There are three basic components of freeze dryer. They are the product chamber, the condenser and the vacuum pump. Each component is vital for the functionality of the freeze dryer. The basic four steps that require attention during the freeze drying are pre-treatment, freezing, primary drying and secondary drying. Primary drying also called as ice sublimation and secondary drying also called as moisture desorption. Pre-treatment covers any method of improving the product prior to freezing. This may include concentrating the product, diluting the product, formulation, revision such as the addition of components to increase stability and or improve processing and decreasing a high vapor pressure solvent or increase in the surface area. In many instances, the decision to pre-treat a product is based on the theoretical knowledge of freeze drying and its requirements determined by the cycle time or product quality considerations. Freezing also called pre-freezing is when sample is frozen to a temperature below its eutectic point or safe freezing point. This is typical in the range of minus 40 to minus 60 celsius whereas certain applications can go as low as minus 60 to minus 80. During pre-freezing the freeze dryer work as a freezer in that no vacuum is applied. Pre-freezing could also be done separately from the dryer. The freezing step is paramount importance as it determines the ice morphology and pore size distribution which is essential for success later in the process. 
This seems rather elementary but it is often the least understood and investigated step of the process. The freezing of the product may result in either a sudden solidification of the liquid at a specific temperature or a liquid which does not solidify but rather just becomes more and more viscous. The eutectic formers freezing temperature equates to a triple point of the product on the paste diagram. In this instance, the product is frozen in the classic sense and the temperature must be maintained below this level during the entire primary drying steps. In order to freeze a product properly, thermal analysis can be used in order to help better understand its properties. Thermal analysis to detect the eutectic point can be done in several ways but none of them are 100% effective. They are time versus temperature curve, differential scanning calorimetry and cryomicroscopy. Materials that have poor structural stability generally end up shrunken, puffed or maybe glassy looking and sticky after freeze drying. Such samples are said to have collapsed during freeze drying. Poor structural stability combined with longer drying time will also result in poor product quality. Once the freezing point of the product is determined, the optimal rate of freeze must also be determined. The rate of freeze determines the crystalline size. It is important to remember that as the frozen liquid will eventually be sublimating out of the product, the larger crystalline structure coming from a slow freeze rate will produce a more porous and quickly dried product. Typically, this is advantageous for the optimization of freeze drying cycles but may not result in the best production in terms of rehydration or reconstitution. On the other hand, a fast rate of freeze will result in a product that turns inactive at a frozen rate and has a small crystalline structure, which in turn results in it being more granulated and therefore easier to reconstitute even if it takes longer to freeze dry. Then let's see what is primary drying. It is a phase where the ice sublimates under ultra low pressure, typically down to 0.01 pascal or lower, depending on the pre freezing temperature of the sample. Typically, shelf temperatures during primary drying are ranged from minus 40 to plus. 20 celsius during the process time which can vary from few hours to several days the shelf temperatures indirectly influences the ice temperature of the sample by conducting heat as well as the radiating of heat from the shelves above There are indications that the cycle has completed the primary drying phase. The product temperature is equal or very similar to the shelf temperature. This indicates that no heat transfer is occurring between these locations and that few vapor molecules are leaving the product and the condenser temperature has returned to its original low temperature. This indicates that the condenser is no longer trapping high load of vapor to result in a temperature rise. And the pressure in the system has returned to its original low value. 
Once again, this indicates that the movement of vapor molecules has decreased substantially. Then, let's see secondary drying. When the product reaches a temperature above its eutectic point, the secondary drying process is started. During this step, the vacuum pump creates the low pressure conditions necessary for the removal of solvents, which often results in a product appearing dry. This solvent being removed during this desorption step is referred to as bound. The amount of bound or residual water in the product is dependent on the amount of time the product remains in the secondary drying phase. The removal is controlled and optimized by increasing the shelf temperature to its allowed maximum. This is however usually never raised above plus 42 Celsius as biological samples contain proteins that would denaturize as a result of this. Vacuum is at this point very high as no or very few vapor molecules are present. This part of the freeze drying cycle typically represents less than half of the total cycle but is highly essential for the final moisture content of the sample. Now let's look at the use of freeze drying in food industry. There are several food industries such as coffee, fruit, juices, vegetables, herbs, food flavorings, fish, seafoods, eggs and dairy industries uh, which are using a freeze drying process during their production. So that is the end of today's lesson and you can search more details regarding freeze drying through books and online research papers because uh, we can't give all the information during this short period of time and freeze drying is a very huge lesson and you should uh, learn more information about that and hope to catch you in next time. And if you like this video, please give it thumbs up and subscribe for videos just like this. Thanks for watching.